If you have fond childhood memories of reading Huckleberry Finn or Tom Sawyer, Hannibal, Missouri is the place to visit. The town, once the boyhood home of Mark Twain, is filled with attraction that tell his story. Since Hannibal may be a little off your normal path, we'll give you a lot of reasons to make that detour. One reason is that there is a lot more to do here besides Mark Twain's stories. Welcome to Snowbirds and RV Travelers Travel Thursdays, where we share the best destinations, travel tips, trends, news, and reviews that make this the absolute best time to be an RVer. Enjoy the show. Please share it with your friends and take a moment now to like, follow, and subscribe. You can catch up on previous episodes at rvpodcasts.com. Here is an exclusive offer for Snowbirds and RV Travelers listeners. Golden Village Palms RV Resort is a welcoming retreat for an active lifestyle. From dining to recreation to shopping, everyone enjoys this pet-friendly RV resort. If you call 1-888-RV-STAYS, that's 1-888-787-8297, and use promo code SNOWBIRDS, you can have a discounted monthly rate of just $749 for stays through April 2024. Spend your days on the pickleball courts, relax by the pools, work out in the fitness center, or enjoy one of the many daily resort activities in sunny California. Today's podcast was written by Kathleen Wall and presented by Perry Mack. Taking the tour at the Mark Twain Cave is like walking in Mark Twain's footsteps. As a boy, Sam Clemens played in the cave. You can take the hour-long guided tour of the cave and see his signature on the rock wall. Though it's been there for years, his signature was just discovered in 2019. It's an easy walk and the cave is well lit. Another historic figure left his mark in the cave. Jesse James used it as a hideout at one time. His signature is dated September 22, 1879. His hideout spot is marked so you can look down into it, but you can't descend because it's too risky. There's another cave in the complex, Cameron Cave. It's about a mile and more primitive. It's unlit and you're provided with flashlights. Sturdy walking shoes are a must for either cave. At the theater in the cave complex, you can watch The Life and Times of Mark Twain, a one-man presentation by Jim Waddell. He does monologues and carries on conversations where he's both parties. His stories are taken directly from Twain's speeches and writings. It is hilarious and feels like it really is Mark Twain talking. If you need some adult beverages before heading into town for the other attraction, there is Cave Hollow West Winery on the complex. It's located between Mark Twain Cave and Cameron Cave. Some of its wines are named in honor of Mark Twain's books. There's Mark Twain Reserve, a semi-dry red, an Innocent Broad, a sweet, crisp white wine, the Gilded Page, a port type, and Satire, a dry white wine. The best place to start in the historic district is Mark Twain Boyhood Home and Museum. The Interpretive Center tells the history of Samuel Clemens, both before and after he became Mark Twain. The complex has five historic buildings and two museums. You enter just past Tom Sawyer's famous whitewashed fence in the Interpretive Center where you learn that young Samuel Clemens moved to Missouri when he was four. There are many artifacts, including some of his mother's clothes, original papers and photos, and a timeline of the Clemens family life. The boyhood home has models of the rooms of the house, and you look through clear glass into various rooms. The rooms are furnished as they would have been when he was a boy. A statue of an adult Twain is positioned in each room with a placard related to the room's function or Twain's life there. Further into the museum, you learn that when his father died when Samuel was 11, childhood ended and his writing career began to emerge. He went to work as a printer's apprentice at the Hannibal Courier. Other museums in the complex are the Becky Thatcher House, where Hawkins family lived. Laura Hawkins was the model for Becky Thatcher in Tom Sawyer. There's also the John M. Clemens Justice of the Peace Office, where Mark Twain's father worked until his death and Grant's Drugstore, where Dr. Orville Grant lived upstairs. You can visit the first floor, outfitted as a drugstore would have been in young Sam Clemens' time. 
The Huckleberry Finn house is a recreation of the home of Tom Blankenship, the model for Huckleberry Finn. Downtown is recreated as it would have been in Mark Twain's time. There's the Mark Twain Brewing Company, while Aunt Polly's Treasures is the perfect place to hunt for an antique or collectible treasure as is Explore Encore Emporium and Lydia's Cabinet of Curiosities. There's lots of other shops and art galleries. Be sure to visit Jim's Journey, the Huck Finn Freedom Center. It's a small museum that tells a big story. It's dedicated to the real-life Jim in the adventures of Huckleberry Finn. As a boy, Mark Twain spent the summers at his uncle's farm playing with the enslaved children. There, he was impressed with the stories told by an enslaved man called Uncle Daniel. Later, this became the model for Jim in The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn and some of the other stories. There is a little about Daniel Quarles, a.k.a. Jim, in Twain's boyhood home. At Jim's journey, you'll learn about the real man who made such an impression on young Sam Clemens. Faye Dant, the museum's founder, tells not only Daniel Quarrell's story, but much about the history of the African-American community in Hannibal. A large part of Mark Twain's life was lived as a steamboat captain. Mark Twain's pen name came out of his steamboat captain career. A trip on the Mark Twain riverboat makes the experience very real. A narrator tells the history of many of the places you see as you cruise down the river. There are choices of one-hour sightseeing cruise or a dinner cruise. The Hannibal History Museum is filled with stories of Hannibal from days of the Native Americans to the present. It showcases history, architecture, and prominent residents. Some favorites there are the Tom Sawyer dioramas. It's also the starting point for the Haunted Hannibal Ghost Tour. The Haunted Hannibal Ghost Tour is a trip into Hannibal's lesser-known history. The guide tells a darker story about the cave. One of the most interesting parts is visiting the Baptist Cemetery. It was established in 1837 and is the resting place of many Civil War soldiers from both sides of the conflict. As you exit the bus, your guide may give you a pair of divining rods to let you search for any resident spirits. Molly Brown is remembered for her surviving the sinking Titanic. Her story was told in the movie and the play, The Unsinkable Molly Brown. She was active as a fighter for social causes like women's rights. Her home is open as a house museum in Hannibal and tells the story of the real woman behind the public figure. Rockcliffe Mansion, a Georgian Revival-style mansion built for lumber baron John J. Cruikshank Jr. in 1900. It has much of the original antique furnishings and fixtures still preserved. It's on the National Register of Historic Places. Portions serve as a bed and breakfast. It offers tours for those interested in historical architecture for 18 bucks for adults and 10 bucks for children. Preschoolers are free. Hannibal is filled with murals. There are over 25 murals scattered around the city. The History Museum has two. One depicts the old Union Depot that serviced the trains that ran through Hannibal, and one of the Hannibal Street Railway, an electric-powered streetcar that operated in Hannibal from 1878 to 1925. Many of the famous locals are depicted in the murals. There's Molly Brown, Ukulele Ike, who was the voice of Jiminy Cricket, Admiral Kuntz, who fought in the Spanish-American War, the Philippine-American War, World War I, and a few others. Hannibal hosts a variety of festivals each year, including the Twain on the Main Festival in May, National Tom Sawyer Days at the end of June through the 4th of July, the Big River Steampunk Festival each Labor Day weekend, Folk Life Festival in the fall, and the annual Victorian Festival of Christmas in December. For lunch, try the Mark Twain Diner. The food is great and represents some of Twain's favorites. La Bina Bistro has more upscale dining. The ambiance is French, and the food is European, mixed with Middle Eastern, with a bit of Missouri barbecue in the mix. The name is a fun play on words. Read it backwards. Mark Twain Cave Campground can accommodate your largest RVs while you explore Hannibal. It's on the grounds of the cave Mark Twain made famous in several of his books. There are 100 pull-through or back-in sites with water, sewage, electric, Wi-Fi, laundry, walking trail, playground... And it's pet friendly. The campground is only two miles from the historic downtown area 
and it's open with full utilities from April 1st through to October 31st and offers dry camping through the winter. Visit Hannibal. It is a little town with a big story.